right. Hey everyone. Nothing much happening this evening, except that uh, the chicks are once again a lot bigger than they were yesterday, and they are pretty much busy stuffing their faces at the moment. This afternoon on the Chicken Peep Show, we attempted to try once more to give the chicks a bath, a sand bath, this time without the rosemary. That seems to have been a bit of a bust. They didn't eat the bath this time, but they sort of used it as a litter box. I've done a little bit of research, and it turns out that the food bowl that we're using may not actually be big enough given that the chicks are rapidly growing in size. So we may have to try again in a few in a few days time with a, a bigger wider tray and see how they like that. That being said, they've eaten quite a bit of bath so they've had a lot of grit in their diet so I'm not putting the grit bowl in today. Other observations I've made today, the, this morning we discovered, woke up to discover that the chicks were all desperately scratching around their home, even though it wasn't quite time for breakfast for them yet. So I took the advantage of the time to give them what we're going to call the um, probiotic ins uh, insert. Now, in the wild, naturally, chicks will have a mama hen to take care of them, and that mama hen will, tr will actually sort of um, be in charge of making sure they get enough food, and they'll also get their gut bacteria from their mama hen. Since these chicks have come to us without a mom, I have taken it upon myself to give them the requisite gut bacteria once they were old enough to handle it. So it's been a week since they arrived, and so this morning they had a special feed of um, about a half cup of yogurt mixed with a half cup of their chick feed, which went down a treat. They actually polished the bowl off. I'll show you the results. So this bowl was completely full this morning and now it's completely empty. They pretty much ate every last scrap of the yogurt chickpea. Oswell asks why the chickens need probiotics. Now there's no particular argument for or against probiotics in chicks, but there has been some evidence that chicks, particularly chicks that don't have a hen to take care of them, uh, that get a probiotic, um, like a, a mixture, like a yogurt feed, at some point in their early stages will actually sort of digest their food better and they're less prone to having um, certain types of diseases. Uh, particularly diseases like diarrhea or any like stomach ailments. So I just wanted to hit off that and make sure that they had the best possible start for their little chicken lives. It's a, apparently if they do have a mama hen to give them the gut bacteria that they start off with, then they won't necessarily need probiotics, but it still helps to give them a little bit of something to, to kickstart what's in their stomach. I basically didn't really choose the probiotics particularly carefully. I just went for a yogurt that had the largest um, sort of mixture of probiotics available. So uh, something that had more than just the, the, the L basilicus, so to speak, and, and a bit more than just the one or two um, different types. So we did we did go for something that had a big uh, a, a more of a broad spectrum of bacteria 
for their guts. Uh, to be honest, we won't actually need to give the probiotics very often. In fact, that one time that I've given it to them, which was today, should pretty much last them their whole lives. Although it is it is possible and, and it is encouraged to sort of supplement them as they continue on. Uh, but generally, giving them like something with with a with a good shot of calcium and uh, that that sort of of bacterial mixture at a young age should pretty much keep them all set for the rest of their lives. The chicks have actually started trying to fly or at least jump. Um, a couple of times I've seen them sort of size up the side of the of the cage. Specifically, they're looking at the wire. Um, and, and let me show you which wire we're talking about here. Do, 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 do. This wire that leads all the way down to their chick brooder, their chick plate brooder. For some reason, that wire seems to make them very cross and they've been more or less trying to destroy it the last couple of, of days. So they've been, been jumping up and down at it. <clears throat> when we do release the chicks into the yard pen for their free range, well, part, uh, their diet will be less strictly controlled in that they'll actually have access to pasture, and insects and, and a wide variety of things to eat. Um, but I will measure their feed very carefully as I have been this entire time that they've been living here in the brooder. So they will still be having that sun up to sundown feed schedule where they don't get unlimited feed all the time, but only have it during daylight hours. Uh, when they're in the coop, they won't be getting any feed at all so that they can sort of perch their little bellies. But that being said, in terms of, of parasitic load, they are vaccinated against two of the major parasites, which would be Marek's disease and the uh, coccidiosis, uh, which are, are the two major parasites. The, the other method you could prevent the coccidiosis parasite is to give them a coccidiostat when they're very young, but since they're already vaccinated, there's no need for that. Uh, for the rest of any parasitic concerns, you, we're just basically going to keep an eye on them and see how their stomachs handle things and, you know, check their poop and everything. Um, if they do get worms, there are wormers that you can use. I was well asked about Marex disease and coccidiosis. There are a number of diseases for chickens. And uh, the two major ones are Marex and uh, the Marex disease and coccidiosis. Marex disease is sort of like a herpes kind of virus, which basically cause, it is highly contagious and um, it, it basically uh, causes their nerves to, to spasm and it, and it doesn't, uh, they don't last long once they get it. There are very few things that you can do uh, to recover, uh, to help them to recover from the disease. They basically never recover. As for coccidiosis, that is a parasite, and it's um, it's a rather nasty one that uh, goes into the stomach of the chicken. It's a kind of protozoa, and that causes them to get diarrhea, and then you know they get really miserable. They lose weight, and uh, eventually they will die from it. Now, if a chicken has coccidiosis, there are some treatments for that, all of which are extremely expensive. Uh, but it, it may be worth, you know, treating them for it in a layer flock. Um, 
but basically you just give them a, a sort of a, a anti uh, para, parasite medication and uh, a cosidiosal medication and that hopefully will help them get over it. Uh, they get um, an infection of costidiosis, any chickens that survive will actually become resistant, which is why we have um, a vaccination. So I was going to show, uh, I, I just got a little diagram here and we'll bring it up on the feed Boop. of a wing. And uh, I thought that now that the chicks have started to develop their wings really well, I thought it would be nice for you all to have a chance to compare a chick's wing with the actual um, wing diagram that we can see on the right here. Now I'm going to see if I can pick a chick up and show off its new wing and we'll see if we can compare what parts are, are what. Now the chick with the most developed wings is of course our very own Square but uh, he's being very shy right now. Come here. Come on Square. There's a boy. And got a hole that over there, and we'll see if we can't spread it out. Yep, they have in fact grown their primaries and their primary coats. I'm sorry, little one, you have to come down. I can't seem to get square to um. <laughs> to cooperate, but you can see that, um, yes, they have their primaries and their primary coverts. They've actually got their alula as well, but it's hard to see given that they keep their wings folded up all the time. Square does have alula feathers. Um, they do have a few of their secondaries, but not as many yet. And one of the really cute things that I don't know if you've noticed is they've actually started to grow their little tail feathers. And you can see right here, Blue Diamond showing off his adorable tail feathers right there. There we are. You can see those adorable tail feathers that are growing out right now. So we're going to move you over here where the chicks are picking away. I don't know if this, this is, yep, there it is. <clears throat> so I was well asked how I feel about looking after these chickens after one week. Uh, to be honest, it is a bit like a fish tank in our living room. They're very relaxing to watch. Um, like, chickens don't have much brains in their heads, so they, they seem to live in an eternal now. Uh, so when you, when you, it's sort of like um, every so often when I'm working, I'll hear some peeping, I'll come out, I'll sit down and I'll watch them for a little bit. And it is quite adorable and relaxing. They are not, they don't really have particularly great personalities in terms of, um, I don't even know if they recognize me very well, but um, they, uh, and they don't seem to have affection for anything other than each other and their food. So uh, I'm not entirely sure if we're, you know, they, they particularly see me as, as a provider of food or anything like that. But that being said, you know, they are very cute to look at and um, they will be very delicious when they're ready to go to pot. 
in terms of how long they'll take to grow, as we know, these are eight-week broilers. So in this pen here where they're living, they'll be staying here for approximately four weeks. Well, at least I thought approximately four weeks, but we may actually end up moving them outside earlier than we expected, given that they already got their um, wing feathers. But they will stay here in this pen until they're fully feathered. So once they're fully feathered, they will actually increase in size a little bit long, a little bit more until you've got like a, a chicken sized chicken. Uh, but once that happens, you know, after that, it's just putting on weight and plumpness. Um, they won't actually get any taller once they've reached that sort of, of median chicken size. And we expect that to happen sometime around the six week mark. What signs of maturity do they need before we move them outside? Well, in general, the chicks just need to have all of their feathers in. That means that they need to be fully feathered all the way from their head to their little tails. Um, we will be doing a few test runs outside before they actually reach full maturity. And they'll be supervised you know, short runs, probably when I'm cleaning the cage out, I might put them in a pen outside to, to sort of get used to the weather and to run around. Uh, no more than about 30 minutes at a time. And then and then once the pen is cleaned, we'll um, put them back in and, and they can sit under the warming lamp and, and get themselves warm again. But uh, they'll only... Uh, we do need to start to acclimatize them to outside so they will have these supervised outdoor times probably we'll start the first one this Sunday which would be two days after weighing day that will be day oh dear day 12 <coughs> excuse me <coughs> oh dear it is a bit dusty in here. So, while well, the, the chicks are kind of flapping around and they are able to, to jump a little bit higher than usual, so I have been a bit more vigilant in keeping the lids of the, of the chick brooder down. But so far we haven't had any escapees. I'll move you over to the food bin uh, so that you can watch them eat while I actually have my own dinner, which is a bit late tonight. <clears throat> so I'll be in and out for the next uh, couple of minutes. Uh, I'll be having my dinner over in our living room. And um, yeah, we hope you enjoy watching the chicks. And if you have any further questions, feel free to ask them in the chat and I'll get to them uh, as I pass by. Now, since I've been handling the chicks all this time, I'm going to go wash my hands, because, you know, wash your hands, folks, and don't touch your face. That's how, you, how we um, control COVID. <laughs>
as well asks why the chicks are scratching around when I haven't put any food in the sawdust. Well, that's actually a very simple answer to that. There is a little bit of food in the sawdust underneath the um, feeder, and that's simply because chickens are really clumsy when they pack at their food. So they're actually scratching around for food scraps down there. Um, and they're also sort of, of, you know, sometimes they do run off with pellets and, and, and spill things around. So they are sort of scratching around for that. The other thing is that chicks, chickens in general, have an instinct to scratch when they're looking for food. And that's, sorry about the camera, I'm just trying to move it. Ah. Production values. <laughs> well, chicks have an instinct to scratch around in general for food. So even if there isn't any food there, they might actually be scratching around as sort of an instinctual practice to, for when they actually start um, looking for food out in the wild. But you'll notice that they, they scratch around the bottom of the, of the feeder before they eat the food from the feeder, which is kind of an adorable thing that they do. Hollander93 asks when the chick's run will arrive. I've had a speak to Royal Rooster, which is the company that's making the chicken run for these um, boys and girls, and they say that the latest it will come will be Tuesday next week, which is fine because they probably won't be big enough to, to go into the run before then anyway.
just going to blub up for the second part here. Because I'm going to show you the chicks, one of the chicks close up. And I'm going to be holding that chick for a while so I don't want to get any poop on my hands. One of the things to note is that the chicks are actually starting to get quite a lot of their adult shape now. And you can see the sort of the, the characteristics that make a good meat chicken on one of these chicks just by looking at them. So you can see here, I'll just snag this little one here. So you can see here on, um, now this is summary bar, that they've got a very large, no, no summary hole still. There we go. You can see that there's a very large chest here where you'd find and that's that's a that's the the breed has very large sort of chest for breast meat which is one of the more popular parts of the chicken <clears throat> they're also getting quite a bit you can see that they're, they're sort of getting little Parsons noses around the back here oh dear what still so you can see that Parsons nose there, that shape of an adult chick that they're, they're starting to form into. And they've got very thick hips, you know, sort of very thick drumsticks going there. So you can see that they actually are starting to get that sort of yummy chick shape. Uh, where you can, if you compare them to what you get at the grocery store, you've got a similar shape. <clears throat> In terms of behavioral changes throughout the day, um, the chicks are the most noisy both the first thing in the morning and the last thing at night just before they go to bed. So they make, um, uh, and last night I think we showed you that they pipe just before they go to bed when the lights are out and they pipe quite loudly to each other until eventually they sort of settle down. Uh, we've also noticed that they tend to make a lot of noise, uh, especially when they're eating and if there's a treat around, they will make a whole bunch of noise fighting with each other and uh, trying to get each other's attention. But in, uh, they also sort of squeak a lo squeak loudly when you pick them up. But uh, throughout the day, they don't really... I mean, they, they go throughout their day in, in sort of a cycle. So once the food comes in in the morning, they will eat their fill, they'll drink their fill, and then they'll sort of lie down and and have a, have a bit of a snooze. And during the daytime, during daylight hours, when there is light, they'll actually have a snooze all over the cage. They'll they'll try and, and space themselves out and, and they sort of, of scratch out little hollows for themselves. And then they sleep in these little hollows, you know, chick-sized hollows. They just sort of sit down and they have a nap. Um, and, they'll, and they'll do it throughout the cage. And, and you can see... Summary bar again, sitting down in that sort of nap position. And they do that throughout the day. They sort of sit sit on the ground and, and have a rest. Um, but other than that, uh, and, and then they'll get up again and then they'll eat. And they almost always eat at the same time. They'll crowd the feeder and then they'll crowd the drinker. And they'll and they'll make a lot of noise, and then they go back to sleep again. And it just happens like it's a cycle that happens like once every uh, hour, hour and a half or so. So now they're at their 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 sleepy time, and you can hear them sort of piping quietly to each other. So, but at night when the lights go out, they will all actually go and huddle together underneath the chick brooder, and they and they don't. Uh, they don't sleep outside. They don't sleep anywhere where they're where they're alone. They only do the sleeping alone during the daytime, and then at night they'll actually squish together for for bedtime. So I'll, I'll try and see if I can show you 
then sort of huddle here together and sort of bring you over on the outside of the cage right down here and you can see they sort of squeeze up right next to each other in a line and there'll be a few behind and a few in front now one of the other things that I have observed with the chicks and I'll move this here where you can have a good look over where the um, let me just see if I can just move you over here so you can have a good look at the thing is that um, almost always we have Square who is the largest chick sitting just outside the brooding area and he always has a lookout so you can see Square is right there sitting by himself and if I get any closer, he'll start to walk off. But he'll make a noise to warn everyone else. So that's Square, Square sort of being, I guess, the, the rooster of the lot, trying to protect his brothers and sisters. And for his pains, he gets the privilege of basically knocking anyone out of the feeder when he wants to feed. The only other thing I've noticed is Aurora, for some reason, running around the cage and whenever she sees someone in a hollow having too much of a good time, she'll kick them. I'm not entirely sure why she does this. I think she's just showing her dominance. She is still the number two of the coop and so she too will sometimes swap with Square and sit on the outside, just on the outside of the brooder, uh, to sort of keep an eye out on things.
The chicks are all huddled at the front of the brooder and that's kind of a sign to sort of show me that um, it's getting a little warm in there and it's time, it probably will be time soon to raise the height of the brooder again. <clears throat> but they seem pretty comfortable at the moment so I probably won't raise the, the brooder until uh, probably two days from now. Uh, they are all actually looking at me because I've wiggled my finger at them. Um, the chicks have actually eaten their, they, they finished their entire yogurt treat for the day. And they have actually doubled their food intake. So instead of eating 20 grams per chick per day, they're now actually eating 40 grams per chick per day. But the food hopper, I've actually filled with all the food that they need for the week. So I'll be taking it in and out throughout the week and um, they should uh, finish it all. In fact, um, with the calculations we did last week, they finished their food in the hopper exactly right down to the last grain. So I'm hoping for similar results in terms of um, them finishing their food this week as well. We will try and colour them again tomorrow because their colours are starting to fade a little. So we'll try and refresh their colours tomorrow as Aldi is having a sale on the paintbrushes and uh, colours and things. So we'll see about trying to get these, these girls, uh, these kids having their um, colours refreshed.
Well, there's always one that needs a drink when everyone else has settled down.
So it's about <coughs> pretty close to bedtime for the chicks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn out the lights, take away the food, and um, well, and you guys can have a listen to the calls that they make just before bed and until they sort of settle down and go to sleep. So, well, I'll be a little bit merciful since one or two of them are having a little midnight snack. But um, in a few minutes, I'll, I'll do that and you'll have a, have a listen to what they sound like when they're getting ready for bed. Now, fair warning, they do get a bit noisy before bed, so let's see if they actually do that same call and effect. Now, they will actually make a loud call as they sort of search their way back to their homes. And they'll call to each other until all of them have actually reached the chick plate brooder. And once they're all underneath, they'll start to make that good night sound where they settle down.
like it's taking them a little while to settle down tonight. Okay, they're all more or less asleep now, so we're gonna go, and you all have a good night tonight. Goodbye!